What is going on mobile creators? I'm back here with another gimbal review and this time we will be looking at the DJI Osmo Mobile 6. Not the OM6, it's the Osmo Mobile 6. A slight change in branding, get used to it. Anyway, I'm very excited to review and share my thoughts on the DJI Osmo Mobile 6 as it comes with some exciting new features that I think a lot of you will like. Before we start, I wanna thank DJI for sponsoring this video and sending me over the DJI Osmo Mobile 6. I've been using their gimbal since the DJI Osmo Osmo Mobile 3 and with each new release they get better and better and the Osmo Mobile 6 is no exception. Now if you're wondering if you need a gimbal I believe that everybody who creates videos on their phones should have a gimbal as it helps smoothen out your footage and makes it look professional. Now, even though most smartphones have good image stabilization, a gimbal still allows you to get even steadier shots and opens up a world of possibilities regarding creative angles and movements. And also not to mention the additional features that come with the gimbal. They're small, easy to bring along and don't cost much compared to larger gimbals. I know it isn't easy to decide on which smartphone gimbal to get as it can get overwhelming with so many out there on the market. I'd probably go nuts, but hey, this is why I'm here to help you find a gimbal that fits your shooting needs so that you don't have to do the work and let the gimbal do its magic. Bah! That wasn't good. But hey, before we start, for those that do not know me, Bennett Grazer here with SmartphoneFilmmaking.com, the ultimate online course helping you achieve cinematic video results with your mobile phone. And like I said today, we will be reviewing the DJI Osmo Mobile 6 and show you how to set it up with the iPhone 13 Pro Max to get you started shooting great looking video. Specifically, I will be giving you a quick overview of the gimbal, a look at the build and design quality, show you how to mount and balance the gimbal, look at the basic button functions and some of the special features that the gimbal offers using the DJI MIMO app, the different shooting modes, give you a walk through the DJI MIMO app, showing you the best camera settings for shooting high quality video. Then we will look at the operating modes, giving you a behind the scenes of how I use the gimbal in action, talk about the price and who the DJI Osmo Mobile 6 is for. Now, no matter if you're a beginner and never held a gimbal before or just want to learn everything there is to the DJI Osmo Mobile 6, then you have come to the right place, my friend, as I will teach you everything you need to know to get started because great gimbals come with great responsibility. Okay, let's let's just get started. Now, as always, I love to start with a quick overview of the gimbal. We have the roll, tilt, and pan motors that allow for smooth movement in any direction. You got the awesome magnetic clamp that allows you for a quick setup. You got the built-in extension pole for those hard to reach shots. And looking at the controls, you have the joystick, a switch button, a record button, and a newly added shooting mode button indicated as M, which we will get into later. This also functions as the power on and off button. What's also new is the small display showing you the battery life of the gimbal and the current shooting mode you're in. To the side of the gimbal, you have the new side wheel to adjust zoom or focus manually. On the other side, you have an USB-C charging port. On the back, you have the trigger button. And to mount the included tripod, you have a one quarter screw at the bottom of the gimbal. So as you can see, not so many buttons, keeping it very very simple. So let's talk about the build and design of the DJI Osmo Mobile 6. I absolutely love the dark gray matte color. It makes me look even more badass than I am. And overall, the design and the build quality are amazing as expected from DJI. A lot of it has stayed the same compared to its predecessor, the DJI OM5, such as the attachable magnetic clamp and the built-in extension pole, which I absolutely love. Now, the magnetic clamp is a bit larger compared to the DJI Osmo Mobile 5's magnetic clamp, which allows you to use a case. I still wouldn't recommend it though. If you want the best performance, I usually remove the case. Now the magnetic clamp itself is such a game changer. I think that all gimbals should have that as it helps for a quick setup. The extension pole that extends up to 215 millimeters is also something I enjoy using and I've been using it more and more as it expands the possibilities of what shots I can get. I find this especially useful for high and low angled shots. For vloggers, this is a must as you can be further away from the camera to fit in more in the frame. The folding design has stayed similar, only this time when folding the gimbal, the top part clicks. So if I open this up, 
you can see that it clicks in so that it's locked in place, which is a nice little addition. The joystick has also been upgraded for a better and more precise movement control. Now the Osmo Mobile 6 weighs 340 grams, around 14 grams heavier than the DJI OM5. In terms of dimension, the Osmo Mobile 6 is slightly larger when putting both gimbals side by side. The gimbal's operating time is around 6.4 hours and the charging time is 1.4 hours. Now the maximum payload is up to 290 grams, which works well with the iPhone 13 Pro Max, which weighs 240 grams. The included tripod is always great to have as you sometimes want to rest it on a surface or shoot a time lapse. So let's look at how you can mount and balance the Osmo Mobile 6. Unfolding the gimbal is easy. Just rotate the pan tilt axis clockwise and then unfold the gimbal as shown. Attach the magnetic clamp to the center of the phone. I recommend not using a case for optimal gimbal performance. Make sure the camera mark is pointed towards the camera of your phone. To attach your phone with the Osmo Mobile 6, align the marks on on the phone clamp and the mounting plate. The magnets will hold the phone securely. Make sure the weight is evenly distributed so that the gimbal doesn't use up more battery. Now here it comes. The coolest feature DJI added to the Osmo Mobile 6 is that the gimbal automatically powers on after unfolding it, allowing you to attach your phone and start shooting immediately, which is super awesome. Let me show you that quickly so I can just unfold it up here. And then once I lift this part up and I can just straight up attach my phone to it. Now I'm not done yet. The gimbal also has a quick launch mode where the DJI Mimo app automatically launches after the iPhone is magnetically attached to the gimbal. And you can enable quick launch inside the DJI Mimo app under general. Unfortunately, it's only currently available on iPhones due to the interface access of the manufacturer. So if you have an iPhone, good for you. This feature really helps reduce the preparation time to start shooting immediately. Also, if you want to shoot handheld, you can just remove your phone from the gimbal, get the shot, reattach it, and you'll be able to continue operating with your gimbal without turning it on or off or using the standby mode. Now that is freaking cool. All right, guys, let's now get into the basic button functions. It's really important that you get to know what each button does. This way you can quickly use the right settings for the type of shooting you're doing and be more efficient. DJI really keeps it simple with just a few buttons. So let's go through each button and see what they do. So let's start with the M button. You can press once to switch mode. You can press three times to enter standby mode and to power on and off the gimbal, simply press and hold the M button. Next, by pressing the shutter record button, it will either take a photo or start and stop recording. This also works with the native camera app and third-party apps like Filmic Pro. Then we have the switch button. Press once to switch between the front and back camera inside the DJI Mimo app. Press twice to switch between the landscape and portrait modes. But you can also do that manually using your hands. Press three times to switch between photo and video modes or enter the quick menu inside the DJI Mimo app. Moving on to the side wheel, you can press it once to switch between manual zoom and focus inside the DJI Mimo app. You can start adjusting the zoom or focus by scrolling the wheel. I really love how they integrated this feature for more control, especially if you want to get more creative with your shots and also to switch built-in lenses quickly instead of having to tap on the screen. Another plus point for efficiency. Last, we have the trigger button. Press it once to enable active track inside the DJI Mimo app. This is useful for keeping the subject centered in the frame, especially when using the selfie camera for vlogging, you don't have to worry about being cut out of the frame. It does a great job of tracking the subject and also has been updated to active track 5.0 for better tracking performance. To enter lock mode, you can press and hold the trigger button, which locks all motors. Next is to press once and then press and hold to enter sport mode. This is similar to follow mode, just with a faster speed, allowing you to capture and follow quick moving subjects more easily. Press the trigger button twice to recenter the camera. Now it does take some time to get to know each button function, so make sure to experiment with them and find what works best for you. So if you made it to this point, congratulations. We still have a long way to go, so let's not waste any time and continue. So let's look at the DJI Mimo app, 
which is free to download and is available for iOS and Android users. Now, if you want to unlock the DJI Osmo Mobile 6 full potential, then I highly recommend you use the DJI Mimo app. Now, once you downloaded the DJI Mimo app, make sure Bluetooth is enabled so that you can connect your gimbal with your phone through the app. So this is how the viewfinder looks like inside the DJI Mimo app. And we're gonna start with the indicators up here. So this shows you the battery life of the gimbal. This shows you the battery life of your phone. And this shows you the current shooting mode you're in. So right now we're in follow mode. And this is the focus and zoom indicator. So right now we're in a zoom mode, but we can change it by pressing the side wheel and it will change to manual focus. And then over here, you can switch between the front and back camera. When I switch to the front facing camera, you can also see that there is a zoom slider over here, but you can of course also use the focus wheel like I'm doing right now. And as you can see, it works really smoothly. Um, and I just like to switch between lenses quickly because if I zoom in between, I just lose so much quality. So I prefer just using each lens and uh, instead of digitally zooming in. And you can also see if I switch to manual focus, I can start adjusting the focus, which is really cool and works very smoothly. And then over here, you have your record button. Then below your record button, you have your gesture control. So right now it's turned off, but when I press on it, you can see that you will be given two options. So you have the follow and shoot or shoot only. So let's first enable it. So if you select shoot, that means gesture control only controls shooting. So if I do a peace sign, you will see that it will start recording without following my face. And I can stop it by holding the peace sign up again. So let's do that again. This time we're gonna select follow and shoot. And what that does is it uses gesture control to shoot while the gimbal automatically uh, tracks you. So if I do the peace sign, you will see that active track is enabled and it does a really good job of tracking my face. It's very, very accurate. And to stop, I just hold up the peace sign again. Active track is really useful if you're filming by yourself where you can stand far away from the gimbal and just hold up these gestures to start and stop recording. Now over here, you have your media and all of your recordings, as you can see. You can press on it, you can skim through it, you can throw it in the trash, you can even share it uh, on different social media platforms. And to go back, just select the arrow key up there. Now below here, you have your shooting parameters. You have your shutter speed, you have your ISO and exposure value. Right now it's set to auto, but if I click up here, um, I can set it to manual mode and adjust these values individually. But I like to keep it in auto, especially for run and gun shooting. Now over here, you also have your beauty filter. So if I select it, you can see it's off. So if I turn it on, it would sort of make me look pretty. But I don't need that because I look good already. So let's turn that off. So let me now show you the best camera settings for shooting high quality videos. And to do that, we're first gonna select the resolution and frame rate, which is right over here. So I'm gonna tap on it and we're gonna select 4K which has four times higher resolution than 1080p and provides more detail and also allows you to crop in a bit without losing much quality. And depending on what you're shooting, if it's a vlog, I recommend recording in 24 or 25 frames per second. And if you want to slow down your footage, shoot in 60 frames per second. That is what I choose when I shoot my B-rolls. Now, the next thing you wanna do is head over to the settings at the bottom left. 
and then head over to white balance you want to make sure that it's a lock if you're outside for example and it's sunny you would want to choose the sunny preset now what you can also do is use the custom preset that allows you to dial in your white balance but for now, I will just use the sunny preset. Moving on, we have a grid. This is really important to compose your shots. I usually have grid lines enabled, but if you're shooting a hyperlapse, for example, grid and diagonal can be really useful as it's easier to keep your focal point fixed. But I'm gonna switch it to guidelines so then you have the selfie flip which will probably flip the selfie camera don't know next is the ft selfie which means when enabled the camera automatically tracks the user if switched to the front camera which is really cool especially if you're a vlogger so if i have that enabled and i would now switch to the selfie camera you can see that it starts to automatically track me, which is really cool. Next, we have Dolby Vision, which I recommend you enable. This allows you to record in a higher bit rate as well as in HDR, which gives your videos more vibrant color, more contrast, and overall improved image quality. Next is Auto Shot Guide. I don't know exactly what it will do, uh, but it says here that when enabled, the shot guides will automatically be recommended when a suitable scenario is identified. Let's now move on to the gimbal settings over here. So above you have your uh, different shooting modes. So you could also use the DJI MIMO app to change shooting modes. You can see here all the four different modes available. I usually keep it in follow mode. Then you have gimbal auto calibration. So if you experience problems with your gimbal uh, or you find that the horizon isn't leveled, you can either use the gimbal auto calibration which will solve most of the issues or if your horizon is still off you can also use the horizontal gimbal adjustment uh, but make sure that your phone is properly balanced as you can see in here you can adjust your horizon by tapping on one of these arrows and once you're done you can select done so next you have a dial mode so if you press on the wheel like I said, you can switch between zoom and focus, or if you want, you can also turn it off completely. But I like using this feature, especially the uh, zoom uh, option that allows me to switch lenses quickly. Then we have the press switch button three times, which I've set to quick menu. Uh, so if I press the switch button three times, you'll see that I can quickly cycle through the menu. I used to use this with the DJI OM5 and 4 to quickly switch uh, shooting modes, but because we have it on the joystick now, this is not necessary. Then you can control the speed of your joystick as well as control the direction of your joystick. Then you can also invert the joystick invert the dial then you can also enable and disable the sound uh, which also helps indicate when i start recording then below we have our general settings so, so you have your device name you have a demo mode which i'm not familiar with yet so what it says is when the device is stationary for a long period of time the gimbal will rotate according to a preset pattern then you have beginner tutorial so if you're a beginner and never used the dji om6 uh, you can always re-watch the tutorials by heading over to general and then selecting beginner tutorial and it will walk you through step by step which i think is really awesome then you have gimbal functions overview so if you first forgot about uh, what each button does, you can go over to the gimbal functions overview and just uh, look through it again. So next you have a quick launch, which I think is really cool and I recommend you enable it. This way when you attach your mobile device to the gimbal, you can directly enter the DJI MIMO app to get started shooting quickly. Now the next thing I want to show you is how you can set your focus and exposure. If I tap on the screen, you can see that a, a box uh, moves and that controls the focus and exposure. So if I want to expose for my face, I can just tap 
and hold on my face. This way the exposure and focus is locked on me. And if I want to drag the exposure down a little bit, I can just drag with my fingers down and you'll see that the sun icon appears. Um, and I think that the iPhone tends to overexpose the image a bit. So I like to drag the exposure down slightly. But yeah, that is an easy way to adjust your exposure and focus, especially when you're running gun shooting. But if you want to have more control over your exposure, you can also use the manual controls over here. Now to the right over here, you can see we have different shooting modes. Right now it's set to video, but you can also shoot in slow motion. You can also create a dynamic zoom. And it's cool because they also have uh, tutorials that will show you straight away how you can do that. You have the time-lapse feature. You also have a hyperlapse feature, which is really cool, especially with the active track. Um, then you can also use photo and panorama as well as story, which we haven't looked at yet. Now inside story mode, you're able to select one of these preset and it will guide you through to create a dynamic video. The purpose of story is to help you create quick and engaging content fast for your social media. I personally don't use it as I like to edit on my computer and create my own style of video. But for those that don't have the time to edit a video, this is really a great option. And what's cool is that it shows you on the top left a video tutorial walking you through step by step. And below here, you will see the duration of each video and then in the end it will cut it for you but we won't go through the entire process for this part all right guys so there you have it that was a walkthrough inside the dji mimo app so let's move on to the shooting modes again it's very important that you know and understand the shooting modes available for your gimbal to get the shots you need shooting modes are great for achieving creative shots which otherwise would be difficult to do when done handheld dji has now made it easier to switch between shooting modes by pressing the m button instead of using the dji memo app this allows me to switch modes quicker when using the native camera app or other third-party apps. So with that said, let me introduce you to the shooting modes that are available and how you can use them to improve your shots. So first up, we have the follow mode. This is what I use most often and keeps your horizon level. It is suitable for most shooting scenarios. Then you have the tilt lock that keeps the tilt angle fixed and is great for capturing tracking shots. Next is FPV, which stands for first person view and follows your hand movement. This is great if you want to experiment and be more creative with your shots. Then you have the spin shot, which rotates your phone using either the joystick or your hand movement. This is suitable for creating those inception type shots where it looks like your subject is spinning. Now, last we have sport mode that can be entered using the trigger button, which I already talked about. So let's now look at the three basic operating modes that the Osmo Mobile 6 offers so that you can understand what each does and how you can use them. The first one which I use most often is the upright mode. This is the most basic mode and is what most people will use for general shooting. To enter this mode, simply hold the gimbal upright. This is great for following the subject or when filming yourself and is the easiest to operate. Then we have the side grip mode where you have the gimbal sideways. This is great if you need to get a lower shot with your camera and want to create a slide shot to reveal the location. Then we have under slung mode, which is great for getting unique perspectives that would otherwise be difficult to achieve. So guys, these were the three basic operating modes. There are many ways on how you can use these operating modes, especially with the extension pole that allows you to get even more creative with your shots. I encourage you to experiment with the operating modes, try out different shots and see what you can come up with. So the gimbal is priced at $169, which in my opinion is a good deal for those wanting a featured packed gimbal that can do a lot more than just stabilize your phone. So who is the DJI Osmo Mobile 6 for? If you're someone who is starting out and wants a gimbal that is easy to use and does not require a lot of time to set up, then the DJI Osmo Mobile 6 is a great choice. The gimbal is also good for those who like to vlog as it has a lot of features such as the built-in extension 
extension pole, the improved active track, and gesture control that can help you get those shots without having to ask someone for help. Overall, I think the DJI Osmo Mobile 6 is a great investment for anyone who wants to take their mobile video capabilities to the next level. It's really a versatile tool that can be used in a variety of ways to get creative and professional looking results. Now, I personally like the automatic power on and quick launch feature as it saves a lot of time. And for me, the faster I can operate the gimbal, the better. This way I won't miss a shot. Now I can tell that this will be my go-to gimbal for future video project as it offers a lot of features that I can take advantage of to get the most out of my mobile videos. Now, if you want to learn more about how to use your gimbal and get the most out of it, I encourage you to check out my smartphone filmmaking program where you can join other students from all over the world and get access to exclusive video tutorials just like this one, as well as guides and resources that will help you take your mobile filmmaking to the next level. Make sure to also download my free smartphone filmmaking guide that will help you get started making quality videos on your phone. Now, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to my channel so that I can keep continuing to bring you helpful content like this one. As always, guys, I appreciate your support. Thank you so much for watching. Keep it mobile, and I will see you in the next video.